I'm Alwyn, um, part of Transition Town. Um, when I joined Transition Town a long, long time ago, um, it was because I was very keen on, on cycling and I could see that that tied in very clearly with what Transition Town's aims were. So from the point of view of uh, reduction in CO2 primarily, reduction in pollution, it's quick, free to use, healthy, enjoyable, and it can also act as community cohesion which I think is important with uh, Transition Town, is that has got that community aspect to it. The aim, the aim of our group is to improve the experience of cyclists and walkers in and around Marlow. And therefore, by doing that, hopefully, increase the number of people who choose these active transport options. Here on the sheet, page here, lots and lots of benefits, both for the cyclists and walkers themselves, and also for the town and for everyone, the reduced carbon dioxide emissions. So just a quick whiz through on some history. So Transition Town Marlow, 2009. See some people there that you might have recognised from earlier on today. Um, we had um, various things about Marlow Car Free Day, for example, in 2008, Channel 4, you may have remembered that. Um, then there was a ma mass bike ride that TTM organised for 2009 to try and show that really we had lots of people who wanted to cycle, but were concerned about the main roads. Um, what happened with small children? You know, how can we make this safer? Because they just literally couldn't get from A to B. You see a few people here, you saw some of them earlier. Um, and uh, at the end of the uh, carbon cycle, uh, we all congregated in Higginson Park and uh, Neil, who you see there, brandishing his bike, um, talked to us about the Marlow Network, the proposal that had been drawn up as a, a suggestion. Um, and you see it there. And in red, the red dotted lines there, are the proposed routes for shared use paths that were being proposed at that point. You, you can see quite a number there, some of which have come up to pass, and other ones have not yet, or maybe won't at all. So lots of positivity. So the one that did come out quite quickly was the um, 2011, the shared use path that runs along the 4155 Little Marlow Road, the main one um, across from the big roundabout, the 404 roundabout, um, in towards Rookery Gardens. Now this little picture here is a, one of the early uh, designs that were on there and you know, when, when these designs go through you think, oh great, this is going to be brilliant, and then you look a bit harder and think, oh that could be improved, and, and by engaging as early as possible you can get some changes. Obviously it has improved from mobility for all it's not just cyclists and walkers you know we have a, a quite a number of people who've said to me it's actually so much easier to move around on these um on these cycle paths when they're shared use paths when they're actually wider smoother nice and new um initially uh, and i know it's not just me there were a number of other people as well um initially the one of the plans went along the right hand side next to the road there you see great marl in the background um, and then it was proposed well, actually you know we could go behind the trees and and that has made one of the nicest parts to cycle along this cycle network um, some of the designs weren't so good so they went had to go around the back of the initial one went around the front of the bus station uh, the bus stop obviously they went around the back then they had it in a kind of ramp and then as you can see here field Dutch ditch field and did some uh, sterling work uh, and helped me put some pressure on to get some railings put on in a couple of areas you see them there. One that we were less successful about the original plan had a build out to provide access on Trinity Road and unfortunately that never actually happened don't know where in the planning it kind of got lost but as you can see that then became really hard to connect this lovely cycle route just to the last bit up Trinity Road to Holy Trinity and it would be wonderful if we could do something about that. At the other end you've got Westhorpe Roundabout and you've got this great shared use path and then you're left suddenly 60 mile an hour roundabout and the next bit is the cycle path, shared use path crosses that slip road 60 mile an hour. That can't be right either. Okay then fantastic work uh, Ali Leibovitz and uh, Alison, uh, uh, Ali Pennant did a brilliant thing and um, lots and lots of community engagement to try and push for having a good um, crossing across um, Wickham Road there and uh, we all went out counting numbers and there we got it 2012 a Toucan crossing fantastic big improvement 
shared use path was then extended to Marlow Bottom. Interestingly enough, the, the text from the council when it was put in said it was going from, and I'll read it out, it's quite small writing here in the middle, the footway from Wickham Road, the Bodmore Lane bit that you saw a moment ago, up to Marlow Bottom to Willow Bank area. And really lovely setup. Fantastic pushing back of the trees you see on the left there, making a nice wide path, and lots of good landscaping around where the pond is. You know, initially I thought that's not going to work, and then it did, it was fantastic. However, you can see from the plan the Willow Bank area is where they were aiming at. Here's Willow Bank, it's the one on the right, it's where the um, uh, Marlow Bottom pre nursery is. Um, but you see on the left the arrow where Burford School is. Now there's a bit of a gap there. Um, interestingly enough, the, the council wrote, um, and this is Wickham District Council at the time, you know, it may be possible for the scheme to be implemented over summer 2014 in time for the start of the new school year in September. That would be brilliant, but wouldn't it be even better if it had gone to the school? And hopefully that is something that could be put in in the future. 2017, we put in the Marlow Loop. Now this was um, a transition town initiative um, and we did it alongside the National Citizen Service. You may know as a sort of a, a, a scheme where 16 to 17 year olds, 15 I think, that, that sort of age group anyway, um, do go and do some community service. They get stacks of things out of it as well um, and they helped us put in this loop. Now there was a lot of other help as well, um, specifically coming from people like George, George Lawrence, um, Nick Rowcliffe also put in a lot of time to help with this. Um, you can see the signage is put up um, on street furniture, on, on was Bucks County Council street furniture, and um, MTC, um, Mile Town Council, uh, Wickham District Council, Bucks Council, all extremely supportive of this, which was great. Transition Town produce a leaflet um, and that is free uh, available. It has a, this map inside it. Um, and we run a, um, uh, a ride. We, we had one just the other day. Obviously it wasn't the same organized ride we normally do, um, but it was a, a try it yourself, have a go, and then upload some photos if you can. Okay, now Frank has done lots and lots of work on our fantastic Transition Town website and there's a section on cycling. Do have a look at it. And one of the more recent things that we put in the 20 and the 20 are 20 ideas of things that could be improved for cycling and walking um, around Marlow. Now sometimes we might see the emphasis is on cycling and other times you might say, well actually if it was improved for cycling it would be improved for walking too. Now some of these ones are currently footpaths. How can that help walkers? Well, you know, we're actually the same community, the same people who cycle and walk and try generally to avoid the car if we can. It does mean that rather than viewing ourselves as uh, cyclists versus walkers, which does happen, I do understand that, instead of that, we're saying, well, actually, the balance is wrong at the moment. The balance is all towards the car in Marlow. And cyclists and walkers need a higher priority than they're currently getting. So have a look at the 20. They're not in priority order, um, but there are some really interesting things there, so things we could do, both inside the town centre and then surrounding ones. You know, how could we get out of Marlow? Well, we've got a 60 mile an hour roundabout at one end and a really tight turn and then quite a fast road at the other end. So, you know, things like 17, how can we get to um, to Danesfield, for example, you know, that would be nice if we could cycle towards Henley safely. Right, so then we run projects. And basically the idea behind this is that we encourage public to use cycling and walking more in place of the car. But also we try and work with the councils to increase the profile of cycling and walking and to raise opportunities for improving facilities. So everyone's welcome, please, we've got a pet project, even out of this lot or one of your own, let me know. So here we go, those are the 20 again. Okay, this is an interesting one. So we talked, uh, I think we had a moment ago um, on the air quality, Neil mentioned 20 mile an hour. Now this would be brilliant. 20 is plenty. It's something we've been talking about for a while. Fantastic if we could have that. I went through Oxford today and so all the streets down the side, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, you know, and it makes us such a different environment when you have the cars lowered to that speed. Here's an example here. Um, the car is the guest. So there on the left hand side, this is one that Owen found and, and put on our, 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 our chat, our um, uh, WhatsApp chat. And you know, it's a great idea because it sort of changes the balance. So, you know, yeah, great. Welcome visitors. Well, but if you're a car, you're the guest here. So, you know, tone it down a bit. 
Um, now, recently we had a, a transition town had a, 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 a petition, a petition saying, well, look, the balance in the high street is wrong, really. Um, we've got people squashed into these two, and I appreciate they've tried, we put a one way system in, but you're crushed in together. But you've got four lanes for cars, two moving, two parked. Four lanes for cars, two tiny narrow things for walkers. And there's a diagram here indicates, you know, the two meters that are being indicated next to uh, Sainsbury's. You know, if you had the queue, where's the two meters here? Whereas if you could reduce the car parking, I'm not saying getting rid of disabled parking, getting rid of the bus stop. No, you can, those are actually next to quite wide bits. You could get rid or reduce high street parking at the moment to improve the position for walkers along that side. Not cyclists, cyclists you can stay in the road, reduce the speed, that's fine. But look what you could do afterwards, maybe post COVID, we could use those spaces. We could use those as community spaces rather than having two lines of parked cars. Okay, now another bit, and I'm really keen on the, the schools aspect. Um, COVID, I appreciate it's a really bad news, but it does mean, and Grant Chaps produced this document in May, saying that we had, that they really wanted to improve the situation for cyclists and walkers, we're trying to raise that. We don't want lots of people using public transport at the moment. We want lots of people to come back to schools in September, full schooling, but safely. So here's some pictures around Holy Trinity. Now, what we would like to do is try and help schools. You know, we're happy to come up with some ideas and suggestions. What would you want for your entrances? Now, many schools, I know Holy Trinity does stacks of stuff at, at a pick up and, and drop off time but sometimes it's not helpful what, what has been set up by the councils so here's trinity road see the wo lines yeah, they stop at the junction so cars can park there this is me on the bike i'm sort of like thinking well how do i see what's around the corner there that's the school straight opposite trinity road's about to be shut for a month you see the diagram underneath but how about it was actually shut for through traffic that would make such a difference. So I'm not saying stop emergency vehicles. Yeah, let them go down, that's fine, but not through traffic. People get the idea, we could put signs up or whatever, but it would mean that that then, you remember that picture earlier on where we said that the cycle route, the lovely one goes through Rookery Gardens and then stops next to a road with no protection for children. Whereas here, if you could make that road, if you could make that road pleasant for people to walk on at the moment it's got this minuscule strip of a pavement down the side but make that a cycling and walking pavement road you've got fantastic route direct to school there and you're picking up all the way along the line okay but we really would like to work with all the schools there please if there's something that in the school section you think oh, i haven't got time they've got so many things on we have volunteers who are very happy to help ah right pedestrian priority now this is another one i would really like to look into um, it, this one here is actually from the Royal Parks in London. That is something that we would like to look into as well, planning. Uh, everything starts, or many things start with planning. Just take a note of that number, anyone who is interested in this. That's the new number for the new, new uh, Newtown Pit has been the new car park. Planning Commission has just been requested again. Um, and I think it's worth looking at these things. You know, if you don't know that it's happening, it's too late to actually influence it. So please make a note of that number if you're interested in trying to influence what goes on. A new car park, another 90 car parking slots. Yeah, Marla needs car parking slots, I understand that. Is this where we want it? Is there anything else that we need in that environment which maybe could be requested at this time? Okay, so um, Jocelyn mentioned this earlier and so did Neil. Um, increasing bike rack provision would be fantastic. Yeah, we need more of it in Marlow High Street. I'm really, really pleased to hear that those two sites are going to be put in soon. It would be nice to have covered areas as well. People have raised, oh, well, my bike, you know, but particularly in schools. If you're going to encourage cycling to school, you really would ideally like to have some cover. So when you come out in the evening, it's been after school, it's been raining all day, and you have to sit on this wet bike. Come on, give them some cover, and then people would feel even happier about cycling to school. Okay, reducing or removing, ID removing the shared use path parking problems and reducing pavement parking. Again, it's the car having priority in Marlow rather than where it should be, the cyclist and the walker. This is a recent corner, just around the corner from me. Yeah, no, no pedestrians could go on that bit. No, that was for the cars and the lorry. And you see here most recently, um, there's a new, new path signs that have been put on and there's a car parking there, that's actually illegal. And this one here is in Marlow Bottom. Again, you can see the shared use cycle path. 
and its block. The Volvo Bridge, fantastic opportunity to get out towards the east. We would need really some way of moving. I've, I've carried my bike up there. It's quite heavy, quite steep. I can just about do it. But to get across there, ideally a ramp. It's done, been done lots of other places. Double line means you can get a buggy up. And remember why we're trying to avoid that. That Marlow round, roundabout at Westhorpe, 60 mile an hour roundabout. Oh yeah, it's got the shared use path around it. Okay, here is Westhorpe roundabout. So we've got the proposal coming up to increase having an extra lane down the side. Um, and the thing about it though is it's about cars, it's about getting a high volume of traffic through at the required time. It's not about, unfortunately, the experience for cyclists and walkers, which honestly are the transport methods we're trying to encourage. Now what we really would need for a start is that roundabout having a much lower speed limit and ideally that speed limit continuing in towards Bourne End. But as it stands at the moment, you have to cross slip roads. I have a, a, a friend who's also a, a, a cyclist who, who used to push her mother in a wheelchair across this so that they could reach the nursery on the other side. I mean, you know, that's dedication to going to a nursery, but it's just not reasonable to expect people to do this. And then we've got uh, the Marlow Wheels for All. Now, we haven't yet made contact with them. That's something that's a project we'd love to do, but we haven't quite got the people for it yet. Now, they're at the Aesthetic Centre, and that brings me on to another point. You know, we have my, my neighbour's uh, children, they go to the Athletic Centre, um, but they go by car because it's felt dangerous for them to cycle across that 60 mile an hour roundabout. You can't use the bridge because it's not, facility isn't helpful. And, and the, the things about that mean that, that they get driven there and dropped off and the car comes back and then they get picked up and the car comes back. All journeys, if it was bikeable, you could do it. The parents would be happy for the children to do it. But Marlow Wheels 4 is fantastic. Um, it's supported by lots of people around here. Obviously Saddle Safari, very uh, good links there. And we would like to help too. But, you know, it, it goes with trying to make sure that it's an inclusive forms of transport that we're talking about here. We're not saying it's the car, car first, car first. Oh, and, you know, you've got some problems with mobility. Oh, get, in, get a car. They can drive around the roundabout. Anyway, there we go. Many, many projects. We're, everyone's welcome. Please, if you have feel that you would like to join, you have some ideas, you'd like to do any of these ones, email me. There's the email address, cycling at transitionmarlow.org. And we have a fantastic, vibrant WhatsApp group. Lots and lots of people trying to do things. Thank you very much.